Everybody, I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Gordon Chang, who is a noted China expert, author, senior fellow at the Gatestone Institute. Gordon, good to see you. Thank you so much, Diane. So we're talking about this. Uh, the U.S. military released a video of unsafe Chinese maneuvers. Let's just talk about this. How unsafe was this? This was this past weekend. Of course, it comes amid rising uh, tensions militarily and otherwise between the two countries. Yeah, there were two dangerous intercepts recently. There was the one on Saturday with uh, the U.S. destroyer Chung Hoon, uh, which was making a transit through the Taiwan Strait. It was accompanied by a Canadian frigate and a Chinese warship crossed the bow of the Chung Hoon at 150 yards. And yes, that was dangerous because if there were a miscalculation, you'd have two large pieces of metal, as John Kirby said, uh, crashing into each other. Um, but also on May 26, there was a similar incident, but this one um, in the South China Sea, uh, you had a U.S. Air Force RC-135. Mm -hmm. It was in international airspace. A Chinese fighter um, crossed the nose and it crossed so close that we saw from the video that the RC-135 actually shook as it went through the jet wash of the Chinese craft. Um, by the way, May 26 is a significant date because on May 26 of last year, China actually engaged in an even more provocative incident with an Australian P-8 reconnaissance craft, also in international airspace over the South China Sea. So is this just an assertion of essentially national power? Because I know one of the arguments from the past weekend is whether this, you know, these two ships, you mentioned the Canadian frigate, were in international waters or what China considers to be territorial waters? Well, China considers Taiwan to be its own. Um, but even so, even if that were the case, this was international waters because China is a, is a party to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which yep. says that a country only has 12 nautical miles of territorial water from its coastline. Um, but of course, China believes the Taiwan Strait and about 85 percent of the South China Sea are, as they call it, blue national soil. There is no uh, legal justification for China's position. China actually lost a case at The Hague over these issues. Um, but, you know, China is lawless right now. Well, I, I want to follow up on that when you talk about lawless. Um, but let's let's focus first on what the U.S. and Canada, in this case, are doing this freedom of navigation transit. Is that normal or are we actually stepping up these particular, um, I suppose, voyages and tests in light of what we're seeing from China? What we're doing is normal um, because, as we say, we can fly, operate or sail uh, wherever international law um, permits us. If there's been any consistent foreign policy of the United States over the course of its existence, it's been the defense of the global commons. And so what we are doing is um, what we've been doing for decades and centuries. Now, China doesn't like it because it believes that these waters are China's. It has no legal justification for that. Um, but nonetheless, China has this expansive view. You know, China has been pushing the notion recently that there is only one sovereign state in the world, and that is China. And since 2017, Chinese officials have been talking about the moon and Mars as sovereign Chinese territory. So these are the most ambitious aggressors in history. And of course, we cannot permit that unless, of course, we are willing to say we're a colony of China.